Does everybody know Binyabanga Wainana? Or has anybody thought, that's a wonderful name, let me just show up and see? Kenneth <laughs> Binyavanga Wainaina. Binyavanga is he was one of Africa's most renowned young His authors. homosexuality, which he revealed a few years ago, writing, has a move died. considered to be bold, especially in Africa, where it is frowned upon. I want this generation of young parents to have their kids see Africans writing their own stories painting their own stories, that simple act, I think that's the most political act that one can have. I want to see a continent where every kind of person's imagination is not, does not have to look for being allowed. Thank you all for coming here to help us celebrate and remember and pay tribute to a great author from the African continent. We are going to talk about Binyavanga Wainaina because his work was so incredibly important and still probably it's going to grow in importance because of his courage to just fully be himself in whatever shape or form it was. I've never been interested in having a conversation where I have to go through a foreign correspondent in Nairobi to say what I think my continent is about. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to say in The Guardian I don't like how you are seeing where I come from, right? If you will remember him, it should be about those things. The importance of beauty and imagination. When we are telling stories, we should always seek for beauty. We should also all be beautiful. <laughs> In all his work, he was trying to remind us that Africa has a right for nuance. So this is the type of human being this man was. Very generous. He founded this, one of the other time, the most successful uh, publishing houses in Kenya, Kwani, to promote African literature. I'm presenting this series of photos because Binyavanga, in his memoir, skipped one chapter. I'm homosexual mom. Yeah. I'm homosexual mom, yes. It was the thing he would have loved to say to his mom. Mm. But we being Africans, there's this whole uh, complex relationship with parents mm -hmm. in which we love them. They love us very much. Very, very much. But there's some things we cannot talk about. No. <laughs> um, so when you said that, I thought to myself, this is the time to put it up. Surely this is the time for me to say uh, that I need to hear from you to be freed to love. And that I'm 40 something years old and I need that freedom and I need to hear from you that it's okay. Because we have so few public African heroes, we tend to smoothen the edges around them and they become sort of one-dimensional characters, which is almost the antithesis of what they're trying to do with their work, right? We say we need to become more multi-dimensional. I think that as thinkers and writers, we should aspire to tell the whole story. Personally, I'm still making that journey myself. Yes. Oh, yes. Bunji was talking about African literature. Oh, he's just confined to the Gikiyu. He's just that, you know, Kenyan writer. You know, he's not important anymore. And I'm saying, why don't I have a say in this? Why is the BPRO not calling me to me to talk to this pro so called professor? Oh, anyway, a professor, I should not say so called. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know? We won't have new one stories if we don't keep writing. And we won't have more published if we stop writing. Uh, and actually, that is advice from Binyavanga himself. When the violence broke out in Kenya, he apparently reached out to his group of writers, his writer friends, with a one-word email, write, get to it. So for those of you who do it, write. For those of you who don't write, keep reading. Thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed the tribute and enjoy your evening.